G'day, Dylan O'Donnell here from the Byron Bay Observatory. Are you tired of taking the same photos of space that everyone else takes night after night? Well, I've just photographed something new. New for me, it's something I've never taken a photo of before. It's not a nebula, it's not a galaxy, it's not a planet. It's not one of the usual suspects. I hadn't even heard of this type of object, let alone imaged it. And when I went to Google Images to see if I could find other examples of this particular target, there was a handful. I really couldn't find very many at all. And that's really exciting. When you photograph something for so many years, the same old things, to find something new to image is quite novel. And it's one of the advantages of having a big boy telescope because I can zoom in on tiny little things. So suddenly the available number of targets to me just opens up. There's lots of small exotic things in space. Community, on this episode, we're taking a deep dive into the small, fascinating, and nameless super bubble N70. My name is Dylan O'Donnell, and you're watching Star Stuff. If you want to take the road less traveled, instead of shooting what everybody else is shooting, you can go exploring. In NINA and SGP and other programs, they'll often have a framing tool with access to survey data. In this case, I knew I wanted to shoot south near the Large Magellanic Cloud and Small Magellanic Cloud galaxies, uh, because they're surrounded by small but interesting nebulosity that aren't imaged as often as the popular stuff. I was looking at regions around the Large Magellanic Cloud and I saw this little circle and said, what the hell is that? What the f I shot it over three nights in hydrogen alpha and oxygen three and used photometric color calibration in PixInsight to produce a fairly true color representation. Like I always do, I agonized for days about whether I'd processed it right and then proceeded to reprocess it over and over until I experienced severe eye fatigue and mental degradation, but ended with something that looked as natural and detailed as my exposures were able to manage. And then I looked deep into its soul. Regular PixInsight annotation revealed nothing really, except that the faintest stars I could pick up, particular imagery, were about Mag 19. Pretty faint. Now, in the 1950s, Carl Hanes made a catalogue and called it Hanes 70. This thing is 300 light years across and is so big we can see it from another galaxy. It's listed as the 27th largest nebula on Wikipedia. In 1981, Rosado suggested that N70 looks like a supernova explosion, which is exactly what I assumed when I looked at this thing. It, it just looks like a supernova explosion. Wikipedia, NASA, and ESO all describe N70 as a super bubble with this dreadful image, which come on, I mean, mine looks better than that one, yeah? As recently as 2014, Zhang and his team suggest that the superbubble theory is inconclusive. In 2018, this great narrowband shot by Joseph M. Drudy got an APOD, and it's a lot brighter than mine, although I think I've achieved the same level of detail, which is great because he's using a rented 20-inch CDK telescope from a professional observatory, and I'm using a Celestron 11-inch SET in my backyard. It's a telescope you can buy from Walmart. Who is buying telescopes from Walmart? Don't buy your telescopes from Walmart. Buy your telescope from a dedicated astronomy shop, someone like High Point Scientific. High Point Scientific will sell you this telescope and if Walmart has it cheaper, which they don't, they'll match that price anyway. And they fully support their product. Can you imagine trying to get help on collimation or image scale from a Walmart employee? Yeah, good luck with that. Support your local dedicated astronomy shop. Maybe a shop that has the word science, literally, in the name. Hmm? 
So what are we looking at here? If indeed it is a super bubble, this means that it's a remnant of a multiple chain reaction supernova event that is so shocking and so violent that it leaves a huge void in space. So this is a remnant from not just one supernova, but supernovas going off in sequence all together. That's a massive event and it leaves a massive shell. As the shell compresses dust and gas around it, it leads to the formation of new stars, which are these blue ones here. But this star formation happens on the outer edge of the shell, not the interior. So these blue stars, they're not in the middle of the shell. They're likely on the close facing edge, which looks like it's clearing a bit. You can see more oxygen through there. In fact, that clearing where the oxygen is more pronounced has been observed in the evolution of another super bubble, N44, which looks more like the bubble has popped and clearly shows the void it leaves behind. Fun fact, you're in a void right now. By chance, our sun moved right into one, which we now call the local bubble. And that probably made it easier for life to take hold without the threat of being hit with another violent space event. I blinked Joseph's 2018 APOD image and mine to see if I could observe any expansion over four years. But no, it looks the same, which is sort of what you'd expect. It's so big and distant, this would only work over a longer time period. Now, do you ever find these hot red pixels in your image? At first, I thought I'd clearly mucked up my image calibration on the HA channel. But if you zoom in, you can clearly see they're not hot pixels at all, they're stars. There are heaps of them around N70. In fact, the more I look around this super bubble, the more I see these red giants more than I see in other images that I take. This is a clue. If these red stars were red dwarfs, they'd be small, low mass, and long lived. Too small to go supernova and too unlikely, they won't expire for trillions of years. If these were red giants, they'd still be lower mass stars, like our own sun at the end of their lives and also too small to go supernova, they turn into planetary nebulas. I suspect these are red supergiants, big enough to be seen from another galaxy and short-lived massive stars that will go supernova. It's possible that these guys are responsible for the initial chain reaction where a group of them all exploded after the first one set them off and started causing all sorts of star creation and destruction all around them. I see these clusters nearby, but these stars are young and blue, so they aren't globular clusters. It's hard to know what was here before the N70 super bubble shell was created. Was it a cluster or was it a handful of red supergiants? And when its expansion dissipates, I imagine we'll be left with a new population of stars with a nice void to live around. And the renewal of all the metals required for new solar systems, just like our own. It could be a recipe not only for stars, but the ideal conditions for solar systems around those stars to eventually develop life. If you're in the Southern Hemisphere, N70 is a circumpolar target. It sort of sits there in the South Celestial Pole most of the night. So, and I encourage you to get more photos of this particular object because there aren't very many online, especially if you've got a longer focal length telescope and you can take a better image than I have here, which you probably can. It's not the only image I got done this week though. I just finished a fantastic Thor's helmet. I hope your astronomy journey is going well and I hope you guys are all happy and healthy. My name is Dylan O'Donnell, you've been watching Star Stuff. Remember, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die.